Welcome to the Speech and Language Therapy Department's webinar with 10 top tips on supporting language development. Strategies to support attention and listening skills. Children's attention and listening skills move through many developmental stages before a child achieves fully integrated attention. This is where they can independently switch to focusing on the correct stimulus in the environment and ignore the other things that are happening around with little adult support and prompting. Until children reach this stage, they will need support to pay attention and listen to others. Here's an overview of strategies you can use to support this. Get down to the child's level. Bend down or sit down to try and be face to face with them. They should be able to see your face fully and clearly. This helps the child know that you want their full attention and it's time for them to listen to you. Using the child's name will also help gain their attention. Try and reduce distractions and background noise. If there's a lot going on in the classroom or at home, such as the TV being on or too many voices, they're gonna find it difficult to work out what they need to focus on. Try and work for short periods of time and gradually stretch this out as you recognize the child's attention and listening skills are increasing. Try and take turns and activities and gradually stretch out how long the child is taking their turn. For example, if you're playing a game such as a ball drop game or with racing cars or pop-up pirate, try and extend the child's turn by 5, 10, 15 seconds at a time as you can see that their attention and listening skills are developing. Try and follow the child's lead in free play. Respond to their interests and what they're doing. For example, if you're playing with a toy car and the child wants to make the car fly rather than drive, copy them and do the same. It's much easier to engage them when they're finding the activity fun and interesting. And the best way to do this is to wait and watch and see what they want to do. Once you know this information, you can use it to your advantage and create a learning activity that will engage them. Try and use simple words in short sentences so you're not placing too much demand on the child's attention and wait for them to respond. For example, instead of overloading them saying, time to put all your cars and lorries away and get your coat from the peg so you can go outside. Try and simplify this to now cars and lorries away, next coat on, then play outside. Depending on the child, you might need to break this down even further and wait for them to complete each part before saying the next bit. For example, you might say, cars and lorries away, wait for them to do that. Coat on, wait for them to put their coat on, now play outside. You can do this by counting to 10 in your head and waiting for them to respond. If you think they need the instruction again, do this by repeating exactly what you said or rephrasing it because you've realised the first instruction was too long and complicated. Here is a short video clip to show you some of these strategies in action. Austin, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Right, we've got one, two jobs that we're going to do today and then you can play a game Okay, and can you remember what we need to do? Good listening. Well done. Good, good listening. And good looking. Good sitting and good looking. Good boy. Well done. So, the special job we're going to do today, I've got some pictures here. Yeah. Strategies for using comments and questions. It's natural to ask lots of questions, particularly if you're trying to encourage a child to talk more. It can seem as if questions are the best way to do this. However, however, questions are demanding. They set up an expectation on the child to respond and answer you quickly. And this can result in the child shying away from you and actually talking less. So where possible, try to use alternatives to questions. Commenting is preferable and offers the opportunity of more natural conversation. To practice commenting, it may be useful to think of yourself as a sports commentator, narrating the child's play as they do it. Questions can be easily turned into comments. So rather than say, what are you doing? To which the child might respond with a single word answer, playing. You could say, oh, you're making the cars fly. This follows the train of thought of the child and invites them to add to the conversation if they wish to do so. They might respond with more detail, the big car flying and going to crash down, and they begin to comment on their own play too. 
There will be times when you need to use questions to achieve your goal. Instead of asking a demanding question, you could use a lead-in phrase where the child finishes your sentence. So you might be looking at a picture book together and you'll comment on something that's happening, but you'll miss out the last word. For example, the girl is, you'll wait, and the child might fill in reading or running. When you do use questions, you should consider what types of questions to use. Close questions only demand a short, often single word answer. Yes and no act questions are an example of this. You might use a closed question to get a quick response. For example, if you need to know quickly if the child has brought in their wellies that day. But you could also use a closed question for choice making, perhaps at snack time. Do you want apple or banana? Or what fruit do you want? This is still a closed question because the child has a limited number of possible responses. Be aware that closed questions will limit the amount of language you get back from the child. If you want them to talk more, using an open question will be more successful. W questions are useful openers. You could say, what are you doing? Why is the teacher happy? Where would you find mini beasts, etc. Here is an example of some of these strategies. Put the blue Play-Doh under and then push, push, big push. Oh, well done Archie. Thank you, it's working. Shall we do more? Put some more under. Put some more under and squeeze. Oh, well done. Oh, more for mummy. Thank you. Should we put some more under? Yeah. Push it under and squeeze the blue play doh. Some more under yep. and squeeze the blue play doh. Oh, big ones. They're big ones, aren't uh -huh. they? Like seaweed. Like seaweed. Yeah. It's blue seaweed. Uh -huh. And get some more and some more under what I've done and squeeze, squeeze the blue. Oh. Mm, big one for mummy, seaweed. Big ones for mummy, it's yeah. like seaweed. Yeah. Using visuals. Using something concrete alongside your talking can help children to understand what you're saying. Makaton is a communication aid that uses signs to support the development of language by supporting attention and listening skills, understanding, memory, recall, organisation of language and expression. Makaton is used to su supplement spoken language, not replace it. So if the child still hears the language alongside the model, it's going to really help. Have a look on our website for further information and videos with key signs. You can also use symbols to aid communication and participation, help children understand routines and systems, support children with new or unknown vocabulary, support the teaching of new concepts, and it also supports children to access the curriculum through differentiated materials. It also allows children to explain their understanding of a concept or idea and supports children with their writing and recording as it increases their motivation and engagement. 
Visual timetables give children an idea of what's happening throughout the session. Depending on the child's level of understanding, you could have one for the whole day or just for the morning or the afternoon. This helps if you need to explain any changes to the routine to children as they can physically see the changes and you can take things away. For example, if you're no longer going outside because it's raining, you could take the outside symbol off and replace it with golden time, for example, to describe the change and show what's happening next. Now our next board support children to complete activities as it's clear what's happening now and what they can expect next. This works well if the child can see what they can play with afterwards after they've done their writing. For example, a motivating game once they've done something adult-led. Gesture and expression often help children to understand. Try and use gestures to support what you're saying and ensure your expression matches the message you are trying to deliver. Here are some examples of how to use visual support with children with, that need support with their language. After each activity is finished, remove the symbol and you can place it in either a finished box or a folder. Some children really enjoy taking part in this, so you can encourage them to remove the symbol and post it into a finished post box. Strategies for giving time to respond. Giving time to respond is about allowing the child time and space to understand what you've said to them and to think about how to answer you. So show the child you are going to give them your full attention. You look towards them. You're quiet and listening, not doing anything else, resisting the temptation to multitask. Stop your activity, whether that's cutting out worksheets or doing the washing up and turn to face the child so that they feel secure and assured that you're giving them the time that they need. By giving them your full attention, you are showing them respect as a communicator and you're modeling good communication behaviors such as good looking, good listening, good waiting and good turn taking. If you're not sure how long to wait, count silently to 10 before repeating yourself. Pausing is a powerful way to encourage a child to talk. By not talking yourself and just looking at the child, you are indicating to them that it is their turn. This is particularly useful if you're working or caring for a child who can be reliant on you to do all of the talking, and now you are promoting their independence instead. It may feel uncomfortable, but the key to giving time is silence, patience and resisting the urge to jump in. Here's an example of giving time. Oh, what's happening in this picture? Swimming? Yeah, people are swimming. Sliding into the water. <laughs> and she's going to splash. <laughs> yeah, I think she is. I think she'll make a really big splash. Environmental strategies. Try and minimise as many distractions as possible for any targeted work. This includes auditory distractions such as busy classrooms or noisy corridors. You can try and minimise this noise as much as possible by moving for, to a quiet room for targeted work or closing the door, for example. Visual stimuli can also be distracting for children. This includes busy displays and things around the whiteboard. Try and stand somewhere with minimal visual distractions to deliver verbal information such as an area of the classroom with a blank wall. Seating positions can also be an important consideration for children who need a little more support with their learning. Ensure they're facing you and aren't too far away. Ensure the chair they're sitting at is at the correct height for them and the table they are using. Also, think about the lighting. If you're using a whiteboard to deliver information, consider is there a glare from the lights which could be distracting the child? Check in with them to make sure they're comfortable and can see the board clearly. Here is an example of a communication friendly environment.
Strategies for using praise. Praise is confidence boosting, and most of us enjoy receiving praise. It lets us know what we've done that is useful and liked by others, and it means that we're more likely to do it again. Children also react to praise like this, but valuable, effective praise occurs when it's meaningful and specific. The idea behind praising the child you work with is that you want to show them what behaviours are useful and wanted. It is a positive experience for the child and it is more effective at getting the child to engage with more wanted behaviours than using negative language to punish an unwanted behaviour. You acknowledge the wanted behaviour and you ignore the unwanted behaviour where it's appropriate to do so. This doesn't mean that the behaviour itself is inappropriate, rather that we are shaping the child's behaviour to develop their language skills. So when a child looks at us because they want us to complete the task for them, we wouldn't acknowledge this. Instead, when the child does the task for themselves, we would praise them and increase the chance of this happening again. Now, there are effective strategies you can use to give good quality praise. Be immediate with your praise. The child should know they have done well as soon after the behaviour has happened as possible. By telling them immediately, they can quickly connect to the wanted behaviour to the praise they are receiving, rather than trying to remember it later to understand exactly what they received the praise for. When you're giving praise, be specific. Try to avoid generic celebratory phrases such as great job or well done. These can be meaningless until you label the behaviour. You'll also need to say why the behaviour was praised and what the wanted behaviour achieved. So here are some examples of praise you might give that are specific about what is being praised and why. Well done, you tidied away so quickly. That shows me that you were doing good listening. Or thank you for telling me that Darren was upset. That was a grown up and kind thing to do. Here are some more examples of using praise. Okay, so Martha, what's this sound? Excellent, that was great. You kept your teeth together and your tongue didn't poke out. So we've got s and this is a sock. Excellent. Strategies support developing vocabulary. Using false alternatives is a good way to prompt children when they're struggling with their talking or their understanding. It means giving the child two options to answer a question, one which is the right answer and one that's wrong. For example, if you're looking at a picture of a boy walking, you can ask the child, is he walking or sleeping? This reduces the pressure on the child whilst modelling the language for them. It also gives the opportunity to directly copy the vocabulary back to you from your modelled vocabulary that you've used. Would you like grapes or apple? Apple. Apple. Would you like yellow bowl or pink bowl? Yellow. Yellow bowl. Here's another strategy which you can use to support a child's developing vocabulary. You can use a multi-sensory word map such as this to secure the word for them. So you can think about a word and think about where you might find it, what category it would be in, how many syllables the word has, what's the first sound. By doing this, you're securing the word for that child and they're more likely to use it again in the future. Strategies to support expressive language. You can use a lot of strategies to support children's language development in the here and now. Modelling vocabulary for children is crucial. Think of a child's language system like a jug. As children hear words, they fill up their jug. The more words they have in their jug, the more likely they are to use these words. When a child uses their expressive language, you can use a strategy called match plus one. This is where you copy back what a child says to you and you add an extra word. For example, if the child says cat, you can say big cat or cat jump. This expands the child's awareness of different words, such as describing words and action words. If you think a child struggles with learning new words, you can help them by teaching them the words in advance. Here is a video showing some strategies. Tell me about your picture. What have you drawn? A bird. 
Yeah, so they can fly. That's right, they can fly high up in the sky, can't they? That's fantastic. He's going to be a grey bird. Yeah. What other colours do you think we can use? Red. Mm hmm. Well, he's got a red beak, hasn't he? They're all going to have red beaks. They're, they're all going to have red beaks. That's a really good idea. Strategies to address errors. When children don't get it quite right, research has shown that it's much more helpful to model the target back to the child correctly rather than directly correcting them. This is the case when it comes to difficulties with grammar, vocabulary errors or speech sound difficulties. For example, if a child says, I fall down, you can model back the correct grammar to them. For example, oh no, you fell down. By doing this, the child is aware of the error, however, you've not made them conscious of it and they're not under any direct pressure to correct. The same goes for speech sound errors. For example, if they say, adapt, you can say, yes, you're right, it's a cat. You can leave a pause and see if the child repeats what you say. But don't worry if they don't, as they will have heard the correct model and they are likely to have taken this on board. Here is an example of using modelling to address errors. So how was school today, Renny? Good. What did you get up to? Um, we were doing running sewing and we're, we were practicing because we we're going to sew our like Paddington puppet. You're practicing sewing a Paddington puppet? No, we're practicing just um sewing like on a piece of paper, like oh. around the so piece. So you were practicing around. sewing on a piece of paper? Not a piece of paper, like was it felt? Ah, so you're practicing on felt? Yeah. Because you're going to make a Paddington... Um, puppet. Puppet. Cool. Strategies to check back understanding. Some children can find understanding instructions to complete tasks and activities that you've set them challenging. Now this could be because they have not understood individual words within the instruction, or they may understand the words but not when they're put together in a sentence. Or it could be that the child has memory difficulties and can't hold on to the information for long enough to understand it. So checking back with the child about what they think you want them to do is an important step in order for them to be successful at the task. And it also gives you the opportunity to clarify and rephrase the instructions if needed, especially useful if you have a child who doesn't realise that they haven't understood in the first place. Start with a task which is easy for the child to follow. It will look predictable. You might have a shape sorting exercise or count the corners or the size of the shapes. This would be a visual and physical task. Being able to see the shapes set out on the table gives the child a clue as to what you might want them to do. It's helpful if there is a clear start and finish point. You might put all of the shapes to the left of the child, this is the start point, and then move them to the right when you're finished. This way the child can predict exactly how many times they're expected to do the task and when the task will finish. Use language that's appropriate to the child's language development. Short and simple if that's what they need. Demonstrating the task yourself give the, gives the child a better chance at remembering and understanding because it means they've seen it happening first. Get the child to tell you in their own way what they think you've asked them to do. If the child has good expressive skills, they can tell you verbally, but it's important that they use their own words to show that they have fully understood what you've told them. You'll need to be aware if a child can repeat word for word exactly what you've said to them, it indicates that they have a good memory, but not necessarily understanding. When we understand something, we rephrase it to others in our own style. If the child does not yet have the means for expressive language, so they might be struggling to get their words out, you can check back their understanding in nonverbal means, such as drawing or gesture. Here is an example of checking back. Okay, I want you to do page 48 
adding fractions. After that, you're going to log on to Google Classroom and do science homework. Okay, so it'll go on page 48 to do some math. Yeah. And then afterwards, I'll go on Google Classroom to do some science homework. Awesome. Well done. We hope you've enjoyed this webinar looking at language strategies. If you have any queries, please visit our website or you can contact your link speech and language therapist. Thank you for listening.